So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so Patients Engage is an online platform uh, which believes in informing, engaging, and empowering patients and caregivers. Uh, today's topic is managing neurological conditions. We did one part of this uh, last week, and we're doing the second part of this uh, with Dr. Vardia from Jaslok. Um, so again, for those of you who are new to uh, Patients Engage, uh, we have been operational for five years. We are focused on holistic and evidence-based management of chronic conditions from the perspective of patients and family care caregivers. Uh, we strongly believe in the value of lived experiences and how it is important to be proactive uh, in order to you know, manage your own health better for a better quality of life as well as for informed decision-making. Uh, for the last uh, two weeks, we have been doing a series of webinars on how to handle uh, the lockdown situation um, and how to manage your chronic conditions given the situation. And the real objective of that is because as this, uh, you know, uh, infographic said it best, it's to move away from being afraid and to just uh, be inundated with information to figuring out what's really valuable and what we can do to uh, manage our life better, our condition better, uh, and to you know, try to make, make the most of uh, the situation. Uh, again, a, a repeat uh, to the uh, attendees, uh, this does not replace individual consultation. Um, so, you know, if you have a very specific question, you will be asked to connect with your doctor or with Dr. Vardia separately. This session is being recorded. If you're logged into Zoom, you can ask your questions through the Q&A. If you are on Facebook, you can post it on the live feed. Um, and you know our uh, social media handles, you can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and now on YouTube as well. Uh, these videos are available. So we've been doing, as I said, a series on managing chronic conditions during lockdown. And so far we've done uh, a few on, on these, about a seven already, this is the eighth one. So we've talked of managing diabetes, uh, preventing aches and pains, managing kidney disease, uh, managing rheumatic conditions and cancer, and uh, you know the general staying safe and uh, uh, also handling anxiety and uh, concerns. Last week we did one with PDMDS where we talked of uh, managing uh, the rehab and the mental health issues, uh, and we had uh, Nicole and uh, Tejali from PDMDS talk to us, uh, and. Today, as a follow-up of that, um, because we also received questions uh, from you, we have Dr. Petrus Vardia, who's a consulting neurologist and movement disorder specialist at uh, Just Lok Hospital. He's a governing council member of PDMDS as well and founding member of Movement Disorder Society of India. And uh, I am Aparna Mittal. I'm the moderator for this session. Uh, so I'll hand over to uh, Dr. Vardia to talk about uh, uh, you know, what he has first. So we'll follow a, a model where we'll run through a few uh, key pieces of information that uh, Dr. Vardia would like to share, and then we'll open up for questions. So over to you, Doctor. Yeah. Hi, good evening, everybody. And thank you for inviting me to, to share uh, my views on how to handle uh, the challenges uh, during COVID-19. So I think there have been some sessions already. So I'll think what are the major challenges that patients with neurological conditions face during COVID-19? And so one is, so, so I'll just go over them one by one. The first is to understand, I mean, obviously every simple ailment cannot be dealt with and one should not be going to the hospital for them. So I think the first thing is which I'm going to tell you is what are the key emergencies that we need to handle. Second is the assistance for other neurological problems like an online or a telephonic consultation. Uh, so it can be, can be done for them and we are doing that already. Then the next is to, to take care of your rehabilitation needs because the physiotherapist cannot reach you many times or your exercise routines have been stopped because you're unable to go down or unable to walk. So that's the next. It's, it's likely that even the mental health is going to get worsened. It's, there's likely to be depression, frustration because you're, you're cooped up in your own house. And, and of course, the fear 
that is associated with the pandemic like COVID. So, so that's likely to cause depression and, and worsening of mental health. And then the last challenge is sometimes the prescriptions run out and they need renewal and how to handle those challenges. So we'll go over them one by one. I think the most important emergency that, that comes in the case of neurology is to deal with a stroke. A stroke is one emergency, COVID or no COVID, has to be dealt with. So a stroke is a neurological emergency. Stroke is a brain attack just like a heart attack. And, and really, it is important that you all know that irrespective of whether there is coronavirus or no coronavirus, rapid treatment saves lives, reduces disability. And it is a question of every minute mattering because the, the time for treatment for ischemic stroke that we have is four and a half hours after we do the, I mean, including the time for the, in the hospital, doing the CT scan, getting your test results, and then injecting you with the, uh, with the clot buster injection. So, so we really don't have time. So if it's a stroke, you have to just dial the ambulance. There is, there is no question of calling your family doctor at any point. I mean, irrespective of whether there is COVID or there is no COVID. Can we go to the next slide, please? Sure. So there are basically two types of strokes. The one on your left is an ischemic stroke, wherein there is blockage of the blood vessel, which causes a stroke. And that's called as an ischemic stroke. Ischemic stroke is the emergency where you have to give the clot buster injection in 4.5 hours to break the clot, which you can see in the blood vessel, which is highlighted there. And the area in blue, which is highlighted, is the area of the brain that is damaged when the blood vessel gets blocked. So basically, a blocked blood vessel will cause irreparable damage to a part of the brain. But if you don't open that blood vessel quickly, the amount of damage will be much bigger than if you open it. So the faster you open the blood vessel, the better the chance that you have to preserve the brain and rather than let it get fully damaged. And that is why the urgency and the rush to, to open it up. Now, the results have even shown that if your opening up is within actually half an hour or one hour, you're probably even more likely to have a better result as compared to if, if you actually open it up at about four, four and a half hours. So this is really a question of every second mattering. So if you did get a stroke, you have to immediately rush to the hospital, get a clot buster and injection as soon as the CT scan or an MRI is done. So this is not a situation you can be sitting at home, irrespective of whether there is a lockdown or there is no lockdown. The second situation is a hemorrhagic stroke where there is a blood, uh, blood gushing out of a blood vessel because a blood vessel rupture and that is from a blood clot. Now these are strokes that, that are not going to be treated with clot buster injections, but they may need surgical decompression. Can we go to the next slide? So how do you recognize the stroke? The symptoms that you will help recognize the stroke would be sudden confusion, trouble in speaking, change in voice, or weakness of one side of the body, like the bath shown in blue in the diagram, or if you suddenly can't see on one side of the body, like, like in the picture that's shown, that half of your vision is cut off, that black piece. That's called hemianopia, or one-sided vision loss. You can also have imbalance when walking or in coordination, and you can also have a sudden severe headache with no cause. So these are the common strokes of uh, uh, symptoms associated with stroke, which one needs to keep in mind as symptoms of neurological diseases. Now, strokes occur due to various risk factors like blood pressure, heart disease, previous stroke. So all these risk factors are there and they are, they are likely to trigger stroke. So when we treat stroke, you have to also look up the risk factors. Next slide, please. And I think you have to be stroke smart. So you have to first recognize the symptoms First, you have to reduce the risk by controlling all your risk factors. And this is not a time when you skip your blood pressure medication or diabetes medication, because this is the time you have to be vigilant to ensure that all your little, little medical ailments are taken care of very carefully, because this is not the time that you really want to be in a hospital at all. And so reduce your risk, recognize your symptoms of something going wrong, like I mentioned earlier. And as soon as you recognize something is wrong and this could be a stroke, you have to just dial for an ambulance and, and call for an ambulance. Next slide, please. 
and for an acute ischemic stroke, the, the strokes that are caused by blockage of the blood vessel by a clot, the treatment is IV thrombolysis or IV TTA within 4.5 hours. Beyond 4.5 hours, or if there is a situation where TTA cannot be administered, either you've got uh, certain situations where your blood is too thin or your anticoagulants or certain other reasons, mechanical thrombectomy, which is like sort of like an angioplasty for the, for the brain vessels, is a treatment of choice. And in fact, now the, the recommendation is not just to do um, IV thrombolysis, but is to do what is called as bridging therapy, where you give IV TPA, immediately shift the patient to the angioplasty room and do a mechanical thrombectomy. So it is being done in most major hospitals. Next slide, please. So, and beyond the acute phase, the treatment is really looking after your risk factors using blood thinners, surgery in case the stroke is very large or if there is swelling. And then it is rehabilitation like physio and occupation therapy, speech therapy. We do give Botswana toxin injections if there is very severe spasticity. And of course, the most important thing is that if you have a stroke, just like if you have a heart attack, you have to change your lifestyle. If you're smoking or consuming alcohol, that has to stop. Your weight has to be reduced. You have to consume a healthy diet and you have to exercise, 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 and more exercise. Next slide, please. So what are the things that are different in the setting of COVID-19? Acute strokes still need to go to the hospital within that golden hour. And this doesn't change irrespective of COVID. There is a lot of new emerging data coming from Italy and many of the other COVID hotspots that stroke can be caused by COVID-19 itself. So COVID-19 itself can cause strokes and even can cause encephalitis-like illness. And this may be seen even if you don't have the typical respiratory symptoms like fever, sore throat, or, or even a cough that is seen with COVID-19. So actually stroke may be the initial symptom of respiratory illness. Now that can be very, very concerning because it means that when we are treating an acute stroke, we have to be very, very careful that it doesn't transmit to the healthcare workers as well. But these are, for, as far as the patient is concerned, you still need to reach the hospital in time. And for those who have existing stroke, number one, don't forget to take any of your medication because in case you've got a second stroke, obviously there are many more challenges than it weren't if it weren't the COVID period. Many hospitals aren't accepting patients, so you may have to travel much further to reach acute stroke care. So please take all your medications in time. Don't skip your blood thinners. Don't skip your antihypertensive medications. Control your blood pressure. Control your diabetes. And try to continue to exercise within the confines of your home. So this is, this is I think, very, very important. Next slide, please. And, and there are certain online supports that are, that are trying to take place in the setting of COVID-19. And this is just some coordinates for Neurology Foundation in Mumbai, who's doing some online support for patients with stroke, but I'm sure there are other centers as well. So, or you can even just do some basic YouTube exercises so that you have some fitness and you continue to exercise during the period of stroke. Next slide, please. So we'll move on from stroke to just how to handle other diseases. As far as both dementia and Parkinson's disease, these are both chronic conditions. So first, you have to continue whatever medications you have been on the previous follow-up with your doctor. Uh, we, at least I would highly recommend that elderly patients should avoid routine follow-up visits. And, and in case there is a need for consultation with your doctor, try to get an online or teleconsultation. I have been doing online consultation. Many of my colleagues have been doing that too. So try and get an online consultation. Obviously, there are challenges. You can't record blood pressure. You can't, you can't record certain examination pieces during an online consultation. But given the scenario that we have and given the risk that the elderly have in getting exposed to coronavirus, this is probably the best alternative in the current time. The most important thing is to continue both with physical and mental exercises. Keep mentally busy. Try to solve Sudoku's crosswords. Try to play board games if there are multiple members in the house. That will keep your mind working. Cards is another alternative, especially the games that have more intellectual calculations, sort of games that will give you some sort of intellectual stimulation are a good idea. Read the newspapers, try to solve crosswords, Sudoku, so that will be cognitive, 
from the physical exercise point of view, you have to try and either continue the exercise routines that have been prescribed to you as far as the therapists are concerned, or go online and try and find some routines to keep you fit. The most important thing is to stay positive. And I think this is a fantastic initiative by Patient Engage because it's keeping you all connected so that you can, you can have all your concerns raised also have online support groups online, engage online with friends, relatives. When I say online means it's through telephones or computers, but please don't go and meet them physically because there is a huge risk of transmission of the virus. And in case there is an acute worsening, either of the Parkinson's or the dementia, the most common cause for this is either an infection. It could be simple things like urinary tract infection, chest infection, or it could be metabolic factors like sodium, potassium, which could be affected. So, so these are things that, that, that will need to be addressed. Remember one thing, that in case you have a febrile illness, currently, especially in, in Mumbai, since this is a hotspot area for COVID, almost everybody would insist on a COVID-19 test before they really, they really separate you out and put you in the regular hospital zone. Because I mean, the fear that, that you might be carrying COVID, which has worsened your Parkinson's or dementia, is there. And that obviously they want to have proper precautions when handling this. Can we go to the next slide? And just like I mentioned for stroke, there are also Parkinson's online support. They are conducting online support groups through all their centers in Mumbai and Gujarat. And these are some coordinates in case you want to join their online support group, even if you don't belong to the region. Can we go to the next slide, please? <coughs> I'll, I'll shift gears and move to multiple sclerosis. Multiple sclerosis population and all populations of immune mediated neurological disorders are on immunosuppression drugs. And they are on medications which, which will actually make the risk of COVID very high. So if they were to get COVID, their body immune system is not as strong and robust to be able to fight COVID. And this is, this is a concern. Also, there are people who are on cyclical medications, which may come up during this period of lockdown. Things like rituximab are like chemotherapy drugs. So in fact, administering them during this period may actually be harmful in case you were to be at a high risk of COVID and you were to get COVID, then, then your body ability to fight the disease would be much less. So it probably might have to be delayed by a couple of months. And most chemotherapies are being delayed even currently for cancer patients because of the coronavirus pandemic. In case there is a relapse of multiple sclerosis, it would be treated the same way as would have been had it not been for the COVID patient. And just like all other diseases, exercises should be continued and you have to stay positive. Next slide, please. And as far as other diseases like headache, epilepsy are concerned, these are also diseases where you're often on chronic prescriptions. I would say until the COVID period is over or you are able to get medical support, don't make any change in any prescription, be it Parkinson's, multiple sclerosis, uh, dementia, epilepsy, or headache. Stay with the same prescription that you were in. Um, both the situations like epilepsy and headache, if there is any worsening or if there's something that, that needs a con online consultation, probably these are diseases that are best amenable to online consultation. Because in most of the patients who have headaches and epilepsy, the neurological examination is usually normal. So in, in situations like these online consultations are relatively easier to do. And a lot of things depend on the history, which can be very well obtained on an online consultation. The one emergency which you have to remember is intractable epilepsy or status epilepsy, which is where you get multiple seizures in a day. This has to go to the hospital, irrespective of whether we are in coronavirus or not, because this needs proper treatment in an ICU setting. Next slide, please. So I think we should stop here for now and then let's take questions and come back to the conclusions later on, Doctor. Sure. No, perfect, perfect. Yeah. Uh, so let me start with a couple of questions uh, that we've got. Uh, you know, are people with any neurolog neurological conditions more vulnerable? Uh, than the general population, and would you want to single out or you know name a few conditions which make them more vulnerable? So I think I already mentioned all the immunological, neurological diseases, multiple sclerosis, neurosarcoidosis, neuroblastic. Luckily, these are less common conditions. 
So anybody who's on immunosuppressant treatment, autoimmune encephalitis, any of them are definitely vulnerable. A large population of the degenerative neurological diseases are elderly and they are at high risk because of the age. Right. Then also those who have respiratory difficulties already are at high risk, like those who have swallowing difficulties because of Parkinson's stroke, they are anyway at high risk because they also don't have the same immunological makeup. So, so maybe a person who has migraines, probably not as, at any different risk as compared to the general population. Mm. Epilepsy, a simple epilepsy, probably not. But those who have far more complicated diseases, I would say higher risk. And especially right. immunological diseases, for sure. Right. Okay. Uh, we've got there's, one there's question. No other, there's no data like diabetes or blood pressure, which is already clearly recorded. We don't have that kind of data yet. Okay. Got it. Um, how to prepare for a teleconsult with a new doctor, uh, assuming that the usual doctor is unavailable for a dementia senior who is deteriorating and cannot communicate so we don't know whether the decline is because of dementia or something else like comorbidities. What sort of data should, you know, the family get See, ready is, and what to is, expect in a teleconsult? Is, this is challenging because, I mean, obviously, I mean, no doctor is very thrilled to take on a new patient on a video consult for the first time. Right. We are forced to do it given the situation. But obviously, you have a lot of limitations. And if the patient is not communicating and not talking, you really don't know the baseline at that point in time. So you really, the doctor has to rely a lot on the feedback that comes from the caregivers and the family members who are living with that patient. So a lot of times you have to rely on that. And maybe in the first, first consultation, you really can't make up your mind. But most of the times in such situations like this, where there's an acute worsening of dementia of Parkinson's, as I mentioned in my talk, mm. I would at least get get tests run from the house on basic whether there is any any in markers of infection especially a urine infection which typically tips the balance if there is constipation address the constipation check if there's any sodium or potassium imbalances so electrolyte imbalances so basic blood urine test can be the first step but obviously if you suffer a small stroke in that period it may be difficult on a video consult to decide for that and but you may have to eventually ask for an MRI if that came to it. Right, right. But but I think you have to have all the. Red, I think whenever you're doing an online consult, share the list of medications that the patient is on. Share all the recent blood and urine reports. Share a brief history of everything that's gone on. If there are multiple MRIs, share copies of them. Probably share it earlier before the consult, so the doctor has it all with him. I mean, that's what I would like if, if somebody was consulting me. But, I mean, each person is different. Each doctor handles it differently. So do you recommend, therefore, that, you know, the family kind of figures out or does these blood urine tests before even contacting the doctor the first time or do an initial consult and then based on the recommendations to the blood urine test? I mean, yeah, I this is a new area, is, so we're trying to, you know, try and give people as much uh, uh, clarity. Right. I so, so, so I think, I think it would be more prudent to first see the doctor online, then right. get the test that are recommended and get back, rather than the other way around. Uh, because it's, it's, we, we're still learning on this issue. Right. But I think, I think uh, it would be wiser to try and get to your original doctor because at least they know you. They have some idea of the baseline. So the first recommendation would be to go and meet your original, the doctor who, you know, really is looking after your neurological problem. Mm. That would be the first choice. Right. In case that, that is not possible for whatever reason, then really you fall back on the next option. Right. Okay. Thank you. Um, also, in any of these neurological conditions, are there any drugs which you know are not available through online prescription, or uh, or now they are all um, available through online prescriptions? So so far, I have not had a problem from my patients telling me that they're not getting medications. I think the pharmacy is also being reasonable. I think if it's got a recent date, it's got a signature on it. 
So online prescription does not mean a message on WhatsApp or a message on, uh, it, it actually means a prescription on the letterhead of the doctor, right. signed by the doctor and then sent to you. Right. Either as an email or as an attachment on WhatsApp. So it has to have the letterhead of the doctor and the sign. And if that's there, I think most pharmacies are as of now. And honoring those prescriptions, they probably may not give you a six month refill at the moment. They might give you one month at a time. But at least till the COVID period is over, but I think they're they are, they are being cooperative and trying to help you tide over that crisis. Right. So just one thing for people who are listening is uh, they are checking that your uh, prescription is... Uh, not more than six months old. Uh, so that is one thing that we have uh, got a lot of feedback from various people who've tried online prescription that they are checking that it's not an old prescription. So if you have an old prescription, you may need to contact your doctor to get a fresh prescription. Um, and uh, yeah, as, as Dr. Vadia said, that they are sometimes uh, limiting the amount you can refill. So that, that's definitely uh, a factor. Um, okay, I'm just checking any other uh, questions out there. So in terms of uh, um, when you talk about headaches, are you talking about migraines? Because uh, that's a question that's come up. Is it migraines or it could be headaches or migraines uh, and that they both anything. are treated? It could this? be anything, anything. I mean, the, the treatment would vary. I mean, Obviously, some headaches are much tougher to diagnose. Right. But many times, a history would help. Now, there are times when you need to examine the fundus of the eyes. Now, that's obviously not possible on an online consultation. But I think the moment you try say that online consultation, you're accepting that there are limitations. But, but in a lockdown, there are going to be limitations. Hmm. And you have to weigh whether the risk of you visiting a hospital is more or whether missing out on some small examination detail is more. And what stance we have taken on when we have formulated our standard operating practice for running our outpatient clinic during the lockdown is that we will do an online consultation for everybody. If based on the online consultation, we feel that no, this particular patient, I really can't make out head or tail on, on the online consultation and I, and I really feel concerned that we're dealing with an emergency that cannot wait and the patient has to be brought into the hospital, we will bring the patient to the hospital. Right. But, but, but sort of we try as to what really needs to come in. And also by doing that, then you limit the number of people in a waiting room also. So right. that, that helps social distancing as well. Right. And, and right now in the situation in Mumbai, right now many hospitals have had to actually completely shut operations because some of the staff have gotten infected. So, so it's, it's actually... Even if you want to bring the patients out, we can't, right? So that is, yeah, that brings me to one question that's come up, that given that a uh, couple of, you know, a few hospitals are shut completely in, uh, especially in Mumbai, uh, what is the recommendation for patients? Do they just go to the nearest hospitals or are there some, uh, you know, is, for instance, just look asking its patients to go somewhere? How How is that being managed? So, so I think we are handling it individually. One of my patients, uh, feeding tube came out, mm. the patient with dementia, on a Sunday. Mm. And obviously, we knew we couldn't bring the patient to the slow. But what we did was, my gastroenterologist was put in the feeding tube, contacted his colleague in another hospital in the city. Right. And he arranged it, and, and then tell the family, the, the, the daughter who's actually not even in India because she's, she's abroad and she can't come. Right. Send me a message that thank you, thank you for arranging everything. It was all smooth and got all done. Right. So, I mean, so these are times that we are also trying to help out, and we all have cordial relationships with our colleagues everywhere. So, so typically, we are making arrangements for them somewhere or the other. Okay. And on stroke, you mentioned that uh, you should get to a hospital, uh, you know, treat it like an emergency, like always. Uh, again, is there, uh, you know, how do you define which type of hospital? Because often you may just go to the nearest uh, uh, clinic, but you right. know, they're so not... Definitely not a nursing home. Right. No, no, not a nursing home. It has to be a large tertiary care hospital that preferably has an in-house MRI, that has an in-house neurology team. Right. So most of the corporate kind of hospitals would provide you these facilities. 
So, so definitely you're not going to the next door nursing home with an acute right. stroke. That, that right. would not be a wise idea. You must go to a hospital that has a CT or an MRI facility inbuilt and preferably an acute stroke care facility. And in fact, I think everybody should identify the largest close hospital, the largest hospital that's close to them so that they can avail of acute stroke care anytime. I mean, COVID or no COVID. Right, right. And, and should they attempt uh, to do any first aid for uh, stroke patients? No, the only first aid is take your finger, press the number, dial the ambulance. Right. Okay. Um, because you, you, you wasting a minute on anything more is not appropriate. Right, right. Um, and uh, at the moment, uh, like for instance, with uh, uh, elderly patients, uh, you know, their families are sometimes having a tough time in terms of managing all of the stuff because there's also limitations on the help that they're getting, right? So a lot of the home care uh, has been affected. Uh, any referrals, any advice, uh, any helplines that they can reach out to that you're aware of? So as far as home care is concerned, initially in the lockdown, that was a challenge. The, the attendance for people who are looking after elderly patients had challenges. Mm -hmm. But I have provided certificates for quite a few of my patients that they are incapacitated and they need full-time help. Okay. And basis of that, the police have given those caregivers emergency passes and they have been allowed to, to come in. So, so that has been allowed. In fact, the police are allowing such caregivers to come in right. and look after these people. So, so that is one, if, especially if the person is really, really incapacitated and needs help. Right. Um, as far as I know, even Portia, which is a which is a company in Mumbai, which is providing healthcare at home, is right. functioning. And in fact, they've they've sent me a message saying that we are open and we are providing caregivers at home. Right. Right. Yeah, I think some are, are providing. Um, uh, although there is still, I, I guess the informal networks have been affected, but some of these corporates right. are... The formal networks are still still working. Obviously, there are challenges and not so easily available. But right. they are trying to do their best to provide care. And in fact, I mean, a lot of the, the residential buildings are looking after their senior citizens. I'm in a complex with 500 apartments and, and they've actually formed a volunteer group where there are only senior citizens living on them and they're checking on them every day. Right. Which is, I think, right. fantastic. Right, right. Yeah, no, I think there is uh, a lot more uh, volunteering help happening. Um, doctor, would you like to summarize some of the key points in Hindi as well for some of our, and I should have announced that initially, but. Yeah, so, so I'll, I'll just, what I'll do is. Do I'll, you want me to share the screen again? Yes, I think what we'll do is we'll, yes, we'll share the screen. What I'll. I'll I'll do the conclusion slide and I'll and I'll then translate it into Hindi. Okay. So so basically, I think after we we've, we've gone through the question answer, we've gone through the slides. So basically, if there is a neurological emergency, it will still require to go to the hospital. As I mentioned, strokes, status epilepticus. If there is if a patient has suddenly become unconscious. It has to be rushed to the hospital irrespective of the lockdown. During the lockdown, for people on chronic diseases like Parkinson's, dementia, multiple sclerosis, etc., continue your physical exercises. Don't forget to take your medicines. Continue your medication as per the previous prescription. And try to engage you know, with online platforms like the Patient Engage or other support groups, support centers, senior citizen groups online. And, and keep positive, keep engaged, talk to your family members and try and ensure that you, know, you're not, you realize you're not alone in this fight and everybody is with you. And I'm sure this period will pass for everybody. So, we will tell you a little bit in Hindi. Mein Basically, COVID ke darmian, neurological diseases are handled in neurology. Can we just go back to the beginning of the presentation so that we sure. can just take the slides again? Sure. Is this okay? Yeah. 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 So, so basically, uh, kuch kuch bimariya hai, jo is darmian, 
जब हम हैंडल करते हैं तो वो इमरजेंसी रहती है जैसे कि स्ट्रोक स्ट्रोक यानी एक एक बात और कमजोर होना या पैरालिसिस होना एकदम सिंपल बात में लफ्फे भी बोला जाता है जो पैरालिसिस की बीमारी है स्ट्रोक की बीमारी है जिसमें कुछ भी करके अर्जेंटली हॉस्पिटल में जाना ही पड़ता है उसमें ऑप्शन नहीं रहता है उसमें जल्द से जल्द हॉस्पिटल पहुंचना चाहिए क्योंकि उसकी जो ट्रीटमेंट रहती है वो साढ़े चार घंटे के अंदर पहुंचना चाहिए यानी सीटी स्कैन एमआरआई करने के बाद साढ़े चार घंटे के अंदर पहुंचना चाहिए तो जल्द से जल्द हॉस्पिटल जाना चाहिए तुरंत ऐसा लगे कि कोई स्ट्रोक के लक्षण है तो तुरंत हॉस्पिटल को कॉन्टेक्ट कीजिए और एम्बुलेंस को बुला के सीधा चले जाना चाहिए बाकी के जो बीमारियां हैं जो इमरजेंसी नहीं है जैसे पार्किसन है डिमेंशिया है एपिलेप्सी है मिर्गी की बीमारी है सर दर्द की बीमारी है जो उसकी ट्रीटमेंट चल रही है उसको या तो वही दवा चालू रखें या तो ऐसे कुछ ऐसा लगता है कि उसको दवाई को चेंज करने की जरूरत है तो टेलीफोन के या दूरध्वनि के मारे या तो कंप्यूटर के मारे ऑनलाइन कंसल्टेशन कीजिए डॉक्टर के साथ और और डिस्कस कीजिए कि उसमें कोई दवाई चेंज कर सकते क्या फिलहाल इस कोविड के पीरियड में डॉक्टर को ऑनलाइन कंसल्टेशन की अनुमति दी गई है और लेकिन इतना ही है कि प्रिस्क्रिप्शन जो है वो डॉक्टर के लेटर हेड के होना चाहिए और वो स्कैन करके या फोटो खींच के व्हाट्सएप या ईमेल के द्वारा आपको भेजा जा सकता है लॉकडाउन के के पीरियड में एक्सरसाइज करना भी बहुत जरूरी है तो योगा के माध्यम से यूट्यूब में माध्यम से योगा या फिजियोथेरेपी या कोई भी फिटनेस एक्सरसाइज भी करना चाहिए ऑफ कोर्स बाहर टहलने टहल नहीं सकते लेकिन घर के अंदर जो एक्सरसाइज है वो कर सकते हैं दूसरी चीज है कि डिप्रेशन डिप्रेशन भी आ सकते ही है ये पीरियड में तो क्योंकि अकेलापन महसूस हो सकता है या तो घर के अंदर रह के डिप्रेशन हो सकता है तो तो डिप्रेशन भी हो सकता है और डिप्रेशन के लिए भी सब लोगों से बातें करो फैमिली मेंबर से बातें करो सपोर्ट ग्रुप ज्वाइन करो ऑनलाइन या या तो जैसे पेशेंट एंगेज जैसे ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म से उनको ज्वाइन करो लास्ट चीज है कि जो आपके प्रिस्क्रिप्शन है वो रिन्यू करने की जरूरत पड़ सकती है क्योंकि प्रिस्क्रिप्शन एक्सपायर हो सकता है तो आपके डॉक्टर को कांटेक्ट करके वो ऑनलाइन माध्यम रिन्यू कर सकते हैं या ऑनलाइन कंसल्टेशन करके रिन्यू कर सकते हैं आई थिंक विल गो स्ट्रेट दूशन स्लाइड नाउ जस्ट गो नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट Let's go to the MS slide. Oh, the okay. MS. Okay, so so yes, yeah. Just one more, one more. Ahead, ahead, ahead. Yeah. Uh, so we missed so, MS. You want to go back to MS? Then, okay, let me try. Yeah, and, think, yeah, yeah here. Yeah. तो बेसिकली कुछ कुछ बीमारियां हैं जो इम्यून सप्रेशन मेडिकेशन पे रहते हैं जैसे मल्टीपल स्लोसिस है न्यूरोसार्कोइडोसिस है जो बॉडी की इम्यूनिटी कम करने की दवाई चालू रहती है उस बीमारी के पेशेंट में ज्यादा रिस्क रहता है कोविड 19 का और इस इसके लिए ऐसे मरीजों को घर पे ही रहना चाहिए बिल्कुल बाहर नहीं जाना चाहिए क्योंकि उनका कोरोना वायरस का रिस्क बहुत ज्यादा होता है अगर उनकी जो कीमोथेरेपी जैसे दवाई चल रही है जैसे रिडुक्सी मैप हम देते हैं कभी कभी एमएस में या तो न्यूरो एनएमओ में न्यूरो माइलाइटिस ऑप्टिका जैसे बीमारियों में तो ये शायद पोस्टपोन करना पड़ेगा इस पीरियड में इस पीरियड में कैंसर की कीमोथेरेपी भी पोस्टपोन की जा रही है क्योंकि अगर इम्यूनिटी कम किए जाते हैं दवाई के माध्यम से तो कोरोना वायरस का रिस्क बहुत ज्यादा हो जाता है इस पीरियड में अगर मान लो देर इज ये बीमारी अब बिगड़ जाती है कुछ भी कारण की वजह से तो जैसे नॉर्मली नॉर्मल पीरियड में हम ट्रीटमेंट देते स्टेरॉइड्स या इम्यूनो सप्रेशन के द्वारा वो देना पड़ेगा लेकिन कोरोना वायरस का ज्यादा है इस पीरियड में इसलिए ज्यादा करके घर पे रहना जरूरी है कंक्लूजन साइज ना नो नो बैक 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 सो बेसिकली वन मोर वन वन बैक This was the only two conclusions. Yeah, yeah. So basically, this one. Yeah. So okay. basically, is there man? Her neurological emergency को जैसे पहले handle किया जाता था वैसे ही करना चाहिए. अगर paralysis का attack आए तो तुरंत hospital को ले जाना चाहिए. 
बिना किसी को फोन किए बिना डॉक्टर को पूछे क्या करना है सीधा एम्बुलेंस को बुलाइए हॉस्पिटल चल जाइए क्योंकि जितना जल्दी जाएंगे जितना जल्दी ट्रीटमेंट करेंगे उतना जल्दी आपको लाभ हो जाएगा फिजिकल एक्सरसाइज कसरत करना बहुत जरूरी है और जैसे अभी पेशेंट एंगेज पे आप ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म पे एंगेज कर रहे कोई भी ऑनलाइन प्लेटफॉर्म पे एंगेज कीजिए पॉजिटिव रहिए बातें कीजिए सबसे फोन पे और फिर आपको विश्वास होगा कि हम अकेले नहीं है देर आर प्रोबेबली मोर देन टू और थ्री मिलियन पीपल इन दर्ल्ड इन लॉकडाउन टूडे सो वी आर नॉट अलोन नेक्स्ट स्लाइड तो कोविड नाइनटीन हैज रियली शेकन द वर्ल्ड कोविड नाइनटीन पूरे पूरे दुनिया में फसल फैला हुआ है बीमारी है इस टाइम में सब सबको सबको मुश्किलें हैं और और साथ में हम उसका फायदा कर सकते हैं टुगेदर वी कैन ओवरकम कोविड एंड लास्ट मैसेज टू एवरीबडी स्टे एट होम stay united in our fight against corona virus thank okay. you thank you doctor uh, this has been very useful uh, for a lot of our patients we've had a good turnout and i think they found the information extremely useful uh, and i think jo sun rahe hain uh, as always hamare sites par aap hum humse sampark kar sakte hain uh, and you know if there are any other questions you can always message to us we will get back to you uh and uh, i don't know there are a couple of people who have raised hands but if you want to ask questions just type it in the q and a um and i'll give you one minute if you want to say something uh but yes as i said all you know thank you everyone and this has been a series that we've been doing if you have any suggestions of other topics uh, we are happy to discuss that or uh, you know look for that um and uh, thank you doctor once again for taking the time to talk to our patient community